Coming up tonight in our news, health officials provide an update on the coronavirus. Plus, a Bahamian student in China tells her story of being under quarantine. And University of Bahamas officials break ground on a new set of dorms. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Jared Higgs. Topping news tonight, as the World Health Organization declared coronavirus a global health emergency, the Bahamas Ministry of Health today announced a travel ban restricting all travel from China to the Bahamas. The government of the Bahamas has implemented a travel ban restricting all travel from China to the Bahamas. Effective immediately, any non-resident regardless of nationality, who has visited China in the last 20 days will be denied entry into the country. All residents returning to the Bahamas will be strictly quarantined and monitored for the development of symptoms for the duration of the incubation period, which is a maximum of 14 days. We have quarantined individuals as of this afternoon. Do you know how many people, are you able to say how many people have been quarantined? Two. Health officials stress that as of today, there are no suspected or confirmed cases of coronavirus in the Bahamas. The total number of confirmed cases has topped 8,000. The World Health Organization has advised against non-essential travel to China. As a result, the Ministry of Health recommended that persons who must travel to that region take precautions to protect themselves by avoiding direct contact with sick people and products that come from animals. Be diligent, pay attention, and equip yourselves with travel advisory information. That this is not a travel ban of Chinese nationals. This is for persons who have traveled to China, whether they're Bahamian, American, British, Trinidadian, or whatever nationality. There are Chinese nationals who have not been in China within the last 20 days. The Ministry of Health says ongoing surveillance of the country's borders is critical, adding officials have confirmed that the country has ample quantities of personal protective equipment. For the frontline staff and the capacity for lab laboratory testing is in place. I would like to reiterate that currently there have been no suspected, reported, or confirmed cases of 2019 novel coronavirus in the Bahamas. Earlier today, national stakeholders, including senior health officials, the Attorney General, the Immigration Minister, Tourism's Director General, and senior law enforcement officers met to ensure there is a coordinated response to coronavirus. Tomorrow, health officials will meet with U.S. Customs Border Patrol airline operators, Nassau Flight Services, Bahamas Customs and Immigration. An initial draft of our preparedness plan and response plan was also distributed. Based on interventions during the meeting, we will be revising the plan and finalizing with wider distribution tomorrow. A Bahamian woman who is studying at a university in the Chinese city at the center of a global health scare is opening up about life under quarantine. She is currently in another city as health officials both in China and around the world figure out how to respond to the virus. Once you're marked as coming from Wuhan, they have to take special precautions for persons in that city that you're traveling to. Bahamian student Emma Rika Robinson strikes a calm tone despite all the chaos and uncertainty around her. Her university, the Wajong University of Science and Technology, is located in Wuhan, China. That's the epicenter of a never-before-encountered coronavirus that Chinese officials say has killed 170 people so far. Robinson was traveling to another Chinese city for spring break when things escalated. I received word that the city of Wuhan had begun shutting down transportation in and out in an effort to uh, contain the virus that was spreading. 
Robinson recorded this video for our news from her Airbnb in the Chinese city of Najing, where she traveled for training. While there, she got word that she wouldn't be permitted to return to her school in Wuhan until that city opened back up. Despite traveling with health records, Robinson says she was placed under restrictions because she came from Wuhan. I was placed under quarantine in my Airbnb to ensure that I did not exhibit any symptoms of the virus. Even though I had left Wuhan with medical records and traveled to Nanjing with them to show proof that I did not have um, any of the symptoms. Chinese embassy officials in the Bahamas warned Bahamian travelers to postpone trips to China until the virus, which has nearly 8,000 confirmed cases, is contained. They also insist it is best for Bahamians in China to stay there in case they have the virus, adding that Chinese doctors and nurses know how to fight the disease. Robinson has been asked to monitor her temperature for 14 days and she says she hasn't displayed any symptoms. She says she will remain under quarantine until at least next week and her fellow Bahamians in Wuhan are under similar conditions. Everyone is under quarantine within their dorms or in their apartments. The city is urging that everyone, if you do have to leave and go out, you wear masks. Uh, you do not congregate in large groups. She says officials at her university, as well as embassy officials, have been helpful and are providing consistent updates. Based on reports in the embassy group, everyone is in good health. Some are staying, choosing to stay. Some are choosing to return back home and some are in other cities. And we're just sort of just hoping this, this, this uh, virus uh, does not do any more damage. Bahamas Air announcing that all of its planes are now equipped with the navigational kits required by the FAA, enabling those planes to resume flight services into the United States. Initially, three of those planes did not meet the January 1st deadline, drawing criticism from the public. The first jet flew to Orlando, Florida last Friday, while another flew to Miami this morning. The third aircraft is currently undergoing heavy maintenance at a maintenance facility in Costa Rica and will be returned to service by mid-March. Discussions are underway for the transition of the ownership of Grand Bahama International Airport to the government within a few months. As the island makes do with a temporary facility, acting Port Authority Chairman Sara St. George confirmed talks to purchase the airport at a nominal price. Kyle Joaquin is on Grand Bahama and filed this report. Five months after Hurricane Dorian decimated most of Grand Bahama International Airport, a standalone building has been in use for the past month as a terminal for both domestic and international flights. Far more than just a trailer, the building has restrooms and check-in counters for Bahamas Air, Silver Airways, and even American Airlines, which is set to resume flights to the island next month. Now, because this airport supports both international and domestic departures, we're talking about the strictest of security measures, which means you will have to go through TSA. Both domestic and international travelers are subject to the tight security measures taken and all sit in the same area. While it's not the usual separation, it's a far cry from the outside tents that had to be utilized for about two to three months after the storm. Despite the progress and the anticipation of an eventual sale, there's still more work to be done. Now, if you can look just behind me, they're setting up the framework for a modular trailer, which will act as an international arrival hall with a seating capacity of up to 200. But it's the future of the airport that's the question of the day. Grand Bahama Port Authority Acting Chairman Sarah St. George confirming that discussions with government to purchase the airport are being expedited and at a price she described as so low, no one should have a problem with it. Arguably, yes, there could be a sale price, but um, it, it's, it's going to be done at a, at a nominal value. I can't uh, uh, go into too much detail, but it, it will be um, you know, almost like a, a straight Handover. After serving as the airport's operator since the 1980s, St. George says Hutchinson Port Holdings has had enough. She added it only makes sense for the government to make the transition into ownership, but with a partner to manage. Anyone in the group really would, has the expertise to take on that responsibility um, on their own because we don't, we don't have that expertise. So it would in any event require going out and looking for partners, looking for somebody who could operate an airport. That, that the kind of airport that you want this to become over the next years. And again, that leads you straight back to the government. St. George said while the situation with the airport proved to be a major setback, it also presented an opportunity for growth, but only if turned over to the government, which she said will be able to move much faster. But because so much needs to be done, because there's so much urgency, um, you, 
you come back to the to the fact that the government is the entity that can do this and this transaction can be done um, in in the best in the fastest possible time. From Grand Bahama for our news, I'm Kyle Walking. Officials unveil plans for a $95 million residence and multi-purpose complex at the University of the Bahamas today. It is said to be one of the single largest investments in the over-the-hill community. Jasmine Brown reports. Details about that new facility were revealed during a groundbreaking ceremony here at the university's Oaksville campus as officials also revealed how they'll come up with that $95 million. Today, we break ground in Oaksville for a project that is estimated at $95 million. This mixed-use facility will include a 1,000-bed student residence, 400 parking stalls, more than 50,000 square feet of common areas, including a fitness center, study rooms, a 200-seat dining hall, a 500-seat ballroom, and a spiritual life center. Also included in the plans is a university village for at least retail, commercial, and business operations and faculty residences. Providence Investment and Asset Campus International, an affiliate of the third-party student housing operator Asset Campus Housing, are designing, constructing, and will operate this multi-purpose area. For the UV project, Providence Advisors will raise the funds to build the facility according to Education Minister Jeffrey Lloyd, who explained how the partnership will work. They raise the funds, they construct the building, they manage the building, they derive the revenue, a portion of which goes to the university, and after 30 years, it is entirely turned over to the university, so it becomes the university's property um, for, you know, without having to pay any money. UB President Dr. Rodney Smith insisted the project is a major component for the further growth of the university. An important and integral part of UB's future is the build-out of our university residence and multipurpose complex. Careful consideration in determining the location of this building was taken. It had to be in a central location. It had to be situated to enhance the economic and social development of the entire surrounding community, especially Bain and Grantstown. The complex is being built on the university's campus just to the east of the entrance. Smith says over the past four years, UB students have been strategically involved in the process. Phase 1 is anticipated to be completed by June 2021, and Phase 2 is scheduled to be completed by November 2021. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. A 26-year-old prison officer was charged in the magistrate's court today with three counts of fraud by false pretenses. It is alleged that between January and November 2017, Alexander Burroughs of Pride Estates collected three checks totaling more than $2,100 from the government by means of false pretenses. Burroughs, who elected to have his case heard in the magistrate's court, entered a not guilty plea. Magistrate Andrew Forbes noted that because Burroughs is a prison officer, he would make a request for protective custody. Bail was denied. Burroughs returns to court on May 5th. Still to come on our news, government signs a contract for the glass window bridge. Plus, the PLP deputy leader slams government borrowing. Stay tuned. Phone is good, internet is good, TV is good. But why just pick one thing when you can have everything with Tria? Only $99 a month gets you phone, internet, and cable. That's everything you need for $99 a month. Ask for Tria. Call 601-2200 or email residentialsales at cablebahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. The Ministry of Work signed a contract valued at over $2 million with engineering technical services for an engineering consultancy that will chart the way forward for Eleuthera's glass window bridge. The bridge, which is the only vehicular connection between North and South Eleuthera, is subject to overtopping during poor weather. Works Minister Desmond Bannister says the contract also contains a 20% contingency amount of $400,000 for any unforeseen or additional services requested. Today we are signing a contract for an engineering consultancy that will undertake a comprehensive feasibility study 
followed by detailed engineering design for a new crossing along a new alignment. The work studies are to take into account future demand, financial viability, climate impacts, including projected climate change and other environmental and socio-economic issues relevant to the site. The glass window bridge is well known for its calm Caribbean Sea on one side and the raging Atlantic on the other. Bannister says there is the potential for more than just a bridge when the new, when the new infrastructure is built. The scope of the proposed renovation works consists of the total refurbishment of a gross floor area of approximately 7,242 square feet of the existing fire station, inclusive of mechanical and engineering scopes and external works. Full bills of quantities were provided for by DHP and Associates under a separate consultancy contract. DHP were also to produce a construction cost estimate based on the bills. Deputy Leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, Chessa Cooper, accusing the Minnesota administration of record borrowing, adding a good chunk of that money, has nothing to do with Hurricane Dorian. Berthony McDermott reports. As government seeks parliamentary approval to borrow nearly $600 million in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian, BLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper says the opposition has many questions. Uh, they're borrowing up to $600 million and Bahamian people are outraged about it, rightly so. Uh, this government came in on a platform of fiscal responsibility, but now we only see a strategy of high taxes, high borrowing, and the highest deficits in the last 10 years. Government spending for the fiscal year is projected to be $308.1 million more than initially forecasted. $120 million of the additional spending is non-hurricane related. Of the non-hurricane spending, $37 million is for renovation at the Princess Margaret Hospital and another $30 million was allocated to the acquisition of a turbine generation plant for Bahamas Power and Light. Cooper slammed this move. It demonstrates to me that there is no firm plan or strategy. Uh, it's very ad hoc, it's very haphazard, uh, they're flying by the seat of their pants and really this is unsettling at a time like this when we are effectively in fiscal crisis. Then there's the $16.1 million for the management of the Grand Lucayan Resort. We knew that the Grand Lucayan Resort, for example, would be a strain on the economy. We knew that it would be strain on the coffers. Uh, against good advice, the government bought the property. But there was no budget allocation. Uh, and now we are finding that the government's borrowing $16 million uh, to fill a hole that was created. Meanwhile, residents took to social media expressing outrage. One person wrote, borrow more money. Another said, Lord have mercy on the Bahamas, more borrowing and no new initiatives. While this person said, let's hope we actually see where the money is spent. As of this moment, has there been any accountability of what has been received towards recovery and what has been spent? Cooper says a PLP government would handle things differently. Now Cooper says government needs to stop using Dorian as a smokescreen and find ways to build the economy. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. When our news comes back from the break, a pair charged with stealing. Stay tuned. Phone is good. Internet is good. TV is good. But why just pick one thing when you can have everything with Tria? Only $99 a month gets you phone, internet, and cable. That's everything you need for $99 a month. Ask for Trio. Call 601-2200 or email residential sales at cablebahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. A man and a woman face multiple charges in connection with hundreds of thousands of dollars allegedly stolen from a local bank. Giorgio Bain reports. A pair accused of stealing by reason of employment allegedly gets over $200,000 from First Caribbean Bank. 30-year-old Travis Seymour of Blue Hill Road South, seen in the gray shirt, and 31-year-old Samantha Gilbert of Venice Bay, faced a number of charges before Magistrate Andrew Forbes Thursday afternoon. 
Seymour was charged with one count of conspiracy and eight counts of stealing by reason of employment. It is alleged that between October 22, 2019 and January 24, 2020, Seymour, acting in his capacity as an automated banking machine technician, stole $295,920 from First Caribbean International Bank using various ABMs across the island. Seymour was also charged with four counts of money laundering, alleging that he knowingly entered into an arrangement which facilitated the acquisition of the proceeds of crime and acquired cash in the amount of $295,920, a speaker system, and a 75-inch television. Gilbert, the bank's ABM supervisor, was charged with one count of conspiracy, stealing by reason of employment, and four counts of money laundering, having acquired a 65 and 55 inch television and two bedroom sets. The pair who elected to have their matter heard in the magistrate's court entered a not guilty plea to all charges. Due to the nature of the offenses, bail was denied. Reporting for R News, I'm Georgie O'Bain.